Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm super excited to finally show you guys some new solar panels. Now in the winter, it's always hard to test these out, so I haven't had any good chances, but the weather's starting to improve, so I'm excited to actually give these guys a test. Now Big Blue is kind enough to send out 200 watt solar panels. They have two different versions. They have a 24 volt version that actually puts out 24 volts, and then they have an 18 volt version behind me. Now both these panels are ETFE coated, they're super slim and lightweight, and they're completely waterproof. Now this 24 volt solar panel here on the table puts out a max of 30 volts, but under load it sits right around 24 volts. Now that's really good for a power station that has a low amperage input limit. For example, the CP500 here on the table, made by Big Blue, has a 3.65 amp input limit. So to get more power, you have to increase voltage. Now remember, you have the equation volts times amps equals watts. So if we want to increase the wattage, we have to increase voltage. So for example, if you took a 24 volt panel times 3.65 amps, you're going to get more power than if you took an 18 volt panel times 3.65 amps. So by Big Blue coming out with a higher voltage solar panel, it benefits this power station and other power stations that have lower amperage input limits. So hopefully that explains why you'd want to choose the 24 volt version versus the 18 volt version. Now remember, this does have a peak voltage of 30 volts. So your power station needs to accept 30 volts max before you want to use this one. If your power station accepts maybe 24 volts max or 28 volts, you're going to want to stick with the 18 volt version up here. So let's go ahead and take a second to dive into the features of these solar panels, take a close look at them, and then we'll take them outside and do some extensive testing. Okay, so both these panels are a bifold design. That means there's just two halves. Now the benefit to having two halves is you only have two kickstands and they're faster to deploy and put away. You have those solar panels that have four sections. They work really well, but they just have a lot of kickstands and it's really hard to get them exactly facing the sun. When you only have two halves, it's just really easy to get it facing the sun. Now on the back side, you have one kickstand here with a snap on the bottom. It just snaps out and then it has this uh, fabric here to keep it from uh, going too far. And then there's a piece of Velcro that holds that in place and just snaps right down. Really nice design. On the top, you have these large handles, uh, very lightweight, easy to carry around. Flip it around and you have your other kickstand. Now it also has a snap on the bottom, some few specifications, and then you have your actual power output. So this is an SAE port. Now the 24 volt version comes with a cable that plugs into the CP500. The 18 volt version comes with a lot more adapters for the use with other power stations. Now when opening this up, it definitely has a really nice ETFE coating. Now I can definitely tell that this is fully waterproof. The entire thing is just encased in this rubber um, surround and the fabric on the back is just reminds me of like a canvas tent material. Just seems like it wouldn't even get dirty. Very impressive build quality on these solar panels. Okay guys, right before taking these outside to do some real world solar testing, I just wanna clarify the differences in two types of coatings you can get for portable panels. Now you may have heard me talk about ETFE on these panels. That's the newer, better uh, coating you can get on solar panels these days. Now the older style is PET, and that's kind of a matte finish. Uh, it's very smooth. And the problem with that is it breaks down in about a year or so of use. So you'll get cracking, peeling, and then your solar panel is just no longer usable. So whenever I get a PET panel for a review, I just cringe. I don't want to review them anymore. So I just invite you guys, make sure you get a panel that has ETFE. So you're definitely getting a good setup with these. It doesn't even have to be these if you're looking for one, but just make sure you get one with ETFE. Now, me and Jeff did a complete solar comparison between a ton of different panels. If you haven't seen that video, maybe you'll find that helpful. We also talk about that in that video. So pretty excited, guys. Let's go ahead and take these outside and see how they perform. Okay, so I brought both of the 100 watt panels outside. Now the CP500 is sitting in the back in the shade. Now I did use the can trick to get the proper angle so we can see the maximum power from these panels. Now as for solar conditions today, it's very clear, just a teeny bit of haze. It's right around 50 degrees. I'm pretty excited to see what we get. Okay, so the first panel that we're gonna be looking at is the B418, which is the 18 volt panel. Okay, it's gonna be quite hard to see, but you can see we're getting 79 watts right here. So 78 to 79 watts with the lower voltage panel. Okay, so the next panel we're looking at is the B420. So this is a much higher voltage panel. As you can see, it's 30 volts input, but around peak power, it should be right around 24 volts. 
Okay, so with the higher voltage panel plugged in, we're getting 90 watts input, so 89 to 90 watts. So we are getting a little bit more power out of this higher voltage panel. Okay, so just to recap, this is the lower voltage and that's the higher voltage. So we saw around 78 to 79 on this one and uh, 89 to 91 on that one. Now let's go ahead and try a different solar charge controller. I have a solar charge controller to tell us the voltage and the amperage for each one. Let's go ahead and test that out. Okay, so this is the 18 volt solar panel testing on my Blue Sky Energy MPPT solar charge controller. Let's take a closer look at the screen. Okay, so we're getting around 18.9 volts, sitting at 4.85 amps, uh, right around 86 to 85 watts. So we are seeing more power output from the solar panel using this charge controller. Okay, so moving on to the 24 volt solar panel, I have it plugged into the same charge controller. Let's take a look at the screen. Okay, so the 24 volt panel, we're seeing 22.9, it's jumping around a little bit. Let's let it settle. 23.95 at 3.46 amps, right around 82.6 watts. And I'm also including a comparison of another 100 watt panel, at least 250 watt panels in parallel, just to see how they perform to this. Now, the reason I want to add these is because on a perfect day, I can get around 98 to 100 watts out of these sun power cells. So that'll give us a good comparison for these big blue panels over here. Okay, so I have the sun power cells hooked up. We're getting 16.33 volts at 5.52 amps, sitting right around 89 to 90 watts. So you can see in the conditions right now, we're not quite getting 100 watts that we usually get out of these solar panels. So in conclusion of the solar testing, we saw really good numbers on the big blue solar panels, about five watts less than my sun power cells. Now, the thing that's interesting is the CP500 power station prefers a higher voltage. So I actually saw the most power input from the 24 volt panel. So if you are looking for a solar panel for this power station, I would recommend this big blue 24 volt as it's one of the highest voltage solar panels that I've tested so far. Okay guys, we're back inside from testing. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the results that we saw. Now starting with the two SunPower Flex 50s, put those both together in parallel. I usually get 100 watts on ideal conditions. So today we saw 90 watts. So that means we have about a 10 watt handicap for all of our testing results. Now that's really good when we go to apply the results we saw with these two panels. For example, on this 18 volt panel, we saw a max power of 85 watts. So if we add 10 watts to that, because in ideal conditions, we'd see that power, you should expect around 95 watts out of 100 when using the 18 volt solar panels. So that's really good on this panel here. Now with the 24 volt panel down here, it worked really well with the CP500 and that's kind of what this is dedicated for. The higher voltage works with the CP500. So if you have the CP500, you're looking for an excellent portable panel to get a little bit more power out of it, I definitely recommend picking up the 24 volt option. Now it's interesting that both these panels have the same exact footprint. I laid them on top of each other. They have the same dimensions. They are 42 and a half inches wide and 22 inches tall and each panel weighs about 8.2 pounds. Okay guys, let's go ahead and talk about price for these panels. So the 24 volt panel is available on their website for $199 and there's a $20 discount code to drop the price down. So I'll include the discount code and the link down below for anybody that's interested in picking up this 24 volt panel. Now the 18 volt panel, I didn't see that on Amazon or on their website. I'm guessing the pricing is gonna be very similar should be right around $200, maybe a $20 discount code, not sure. The only difference between these two panels is that this one comes with extra adapters. So it might be a little bit more, I'm not sure. It would just make sense that they are priced very similarly. Now, one thing that you wanna pay attention to is the price per watt. So I'll throw these numbers up on the screen for each of these three options. And I'll also throw up a number about the watts per pound, meaning how portable is the panel? Is it heavy to carry around or is it pretty lightweight for the wattage it produces? Okay, so here's what comes with the 18 volt solar panel, a 5521 to SAE extension cable, an SAE to MC4 connection cable, so you can connect to a power station that has MC4 connections. And then you have all the 5521 barrel connectors so you can use with multiple power stations. You get the owner's manual and an 18 month warranty card. Now all you get with the 24 volt panel is the extension cable that goes from 5521 to SAE for the CP500. You get the user manual and an 18 month warranty card. Okay guys, well that's basically everything that I wanted to talk about in the review video today. And uh, was pretty happy with the results on these panels. Now it's nice that there are two different options, so you can use the one that works best for your use case. Now every single one of you guys has a different use case, whether it's for camping, 
if you have these panels for emergency preparedness or if you just have them sitting out all the time putting power in your power stations well there's so many different ways to use it only you guys will know if these panels are right for you now if you guys have any questions about them throw a comment down below i'd love to get back to you and i'll see if i can come up with some sort of answer now thanks again big blue for sending out these panels for review i always like to see the new and upcoming technology each year and these panels definitely impress now let me know what you guys thought about them throw a comment down below let me know what you guys think about these panels or if it's something that you'd be interested in thanks for watching the channel today guys we'll see you guys in the next video